In this video, I'll again be attempting something completely out of my comfort zone, and that's Hardcore OSL. What's OSL, you ask? Well, in regular dictionary terms, that's Object Source Lighting, which is a technique that's grown popular in the last few years, and seems to be what all the cool kids are doing these days. I'm going to attempt to be one of these cool kids and hope I can pull it off. The figure I'll be subjecting this technique to is this great Young Miniatures Viking Bust. So let's go and see how I make out. Hello everyone and welcome back to Small Soldier. I hope you're all doing well and getting to spend some quality time at the hobby bench. I, however, have not been able to spend as much time as I'd probably like to have. Yeah, real world responsibilities and all that stuff. Before we start, I thought I'd give you a quick look at what the resin looks like and the quality of the casting. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'd probably give this casting around a 9. The sculpting and details are fantastic, there's just a few flaws that we'll go over later on in the video. Because of the low part count, it's a quick build and there's not really a lot of cleanup to do. So we can get to painting this dude quickly. To glue all the parts together, we're going to need some CA glue, or as some call it, super glue. A couple applicators, and a tea light candle. I've used this technique in other videos, but if you haven't seen this before, what the tea candle does is it preserves the CA glue so it doesn't dry up on you as quickly. If your application tool gets all gummed up with CA glue, all you need to do is take a lighter and it'll burn right off. There are a few casting blocks you need to remove and the best way to do it is probably with a razor saw. You can use a hobby knife but it can get a little dangerous so just be careful when you're removing these. Speaking of hobby knives, that's exactly what I'm using here. There's many different tools you can use for this process of scraping off mold lines, seam lines, that kind of thing. But for the most part, I use a hobby blade just because it maneuvers easier than most tools. Well, it's what I prefer, but you can use whatever you feel works best for you. Although this area won't be seen and you probably don't need to clean it, I always find it's a good idea to scrape the lines off or any kind of extra residue because it can affect the way the piece fits. Now, before you go ahead and start using nippers like this, Really be careful that the part you're clipping off has a lot of strength to it uh, because resin is brittle It will break and could possibly damage the part. I wouldn't recommend using a knife this way to clean the resin off uh, Unless you're really experienced doing this you will probably cut yourself because you're cutting towards your thumb however using the knife this way is a safer way and chances of you cutting yourself are a lot less likely Resin is a toxic substance, so you probably want to use a mask because it does kick up a lot of dust. And to clean up all that pesky debris, I like using this dust buster. It's quick, efficient, and you can get on to the next piece. The finest sanding product I've found for resin is steel wool. This is the brand I use. You should be able to find steel wool in any good paint or hardware store. I think it's one of the best products out there if you're looking to really achieve an ultra smooth finish, especially on resin. All you need is a small ball and I found working it in a circular motion will give you the best results. 
The only drawback of steel wool is it's quite messy, but in my opinion, the results are worth it. And it's really not that big of a deal to clean up. A selection of steel files also help when preparing resin. With a variety of different shaped tips, you should be able to handle most tasks fairly easily. CA glue is my choice for resin parts. You can, however, use 5-minute epoxy, which works just as well. The only thing with CA glue is you need to make sure your parts are aligned properly before you put the flash tack or kicker on. Just make sure to test fit things before you put them on with the CA glue because you don't want to have a problem down the road with a misfitting part. If that does happen, however, you can use debonder to loosen the piece, but you will need to be careful when you remove it so it doesn't break. The best way to secure your miniature to a base is to use some sort of metal pin. I like to use brass, but you can also use a paper clip or anything else suitable that will give it strength. These are the flawed areas I was talking about earlier in the video. They were fairly deep sinkholes that needed to be repaired with the putty. And unfortunately it was too hard to film this part. But I will show you how I go about filling gaps in the miniature in the following steps. For applying the putty I like to use these custom made sculpting tools. Cocktail sticks, CA glue, and a little time and effort is all you need to create your own custom tools. I don't have a video to show this, but maybe I should make one. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a video on how to make these custom sculpting tools. Washing your figure before painting is another important step. If you wear gloves like I do while handling your figure, you probably won't have any issues. However, I still like to do this because you never know what's lurking in all those deep undercuts. Before priming, I like to use an airbrush to push all the water out of the deep nooks and crannies. You could, however, just let the figure sit off to the side to air dry. Mr. Surfacer 1000 is an excellent choice for priming resin. I recently purchased this little paint mixer. This is actually the first time I've ever used it and I have to say it sure beats shaking the bottle. I probably normally wouldn't have shelled out the cash for this thing but I had an Amazon gift card and one thing led to the other. I'll be using my Iwata Neo for the priming and it comes with this bigger cup to accommodate larger jobs. What's the correct consistency for paint when airbrushing? I think the best explanation is milk. I don't know if giving you ratios is such a good idea. It really comes down to personal preference for each person. So experiment with your paint and I guarantee you'll find that sweet spot. To achieve a nice smooth primer coat, it's always best to work in thin, multiple applications, rotating the figure as you work. By working this way, you can avoid many problems, one being sagging in the paint or drips, and the other obscuring fine detail. Now that's smooth. These are the colors I'll be using for the pre-shade. I love this thing. It's way easier than shaking a bottle. I know this is a luxury hobby item, but I guess you don't know until you know. Pre-shading is a simple and effective method for creating light and shadow on the figure. 
This method gives us a roadmap of where to place the shadows and highlights. If you're interested in a more in-depth tutorial on pre-shading, I'll have a link right up here. I've been experimenting with inks lately and I have to say I'm thoroughly impressed. They seem to be a lot more intense and saturated than regular hobby paints. If you haven't tried them yet, I'd suggest you give them a try. I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully learned a thing or two. If you like what I'm doing here, why not subscribe? It doesn't cost you anything and you can always unsubscribe later. And if you'd be so kind to give me a like, I'd certainly appreciate that as well. I'm not certain yet how I'm going to present the next video, whether it's going to be a full video or in parts. I guess we'll have to see. Until then, take care and I'll see you in the next one.